Hey guys, how you doing? So, yeah, um, so <laughs> kind of just got the info and I just decided to go live. Um, so Kathleen Kennedy has now been confirmed to be continuing at Lucasfilm for many more years to come. Um, I know there were a lot of fan theories of people talking about, okay, no, she's going to be fired. She's letting go or whatever because of her, you know, um, I would say her governing abilities over the sequel trilogy and uh, what a mess that was and everything in between and all the other little decisions here and there. Look, before we read this, my views on it are um, people can change. Okay. So. I'm going to say that before I tell you how I really feel about it. People can change and there's always going to be a room for improvement no matter what, you know. Um, we saw with The Mandalorian, she was obviously still directing Lucasfilm at that point. So if it, it really only comes down to who she puts in charge and who she lets have complete control over certain projects. John Favreau and Dave Filoni are the ones to lead Lucasfilm in my opinion. George Lucas himself wasn't a guy that would micromanage the business side. And he said this in interviews himself. You can go check it out. He'd said it in uh, an interview with uh, the creator of Family Guy, Seth MacFarlane. Um, was it Seth MacFarlane? No. Anyways, he said that he doesn't micromanage the business side because he just wants to create. And when he directs his movies, he micromanages that. So from my understanding, okay, look, if Kathleen Kennedy wants to you know, micromanage or manage the business side of Lucasfilm, by all means, go do your thing. But when it comes to the story and everything else in between, please give it off to the people like George Lucas, namely John Favreau and Dave Filoni, who have learned from him. So let's go ahead and read this. Disney CEO Bob Chapek voiced his support for Lucasfilm head Kathleen Kennedy during the Walt Disney Company's 2021 annual meeting of shareholders today, which, by the way, apparently... Am I reading this right? Disney Plus has now over 100 million users. What? <laughs> That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Good for them. Um, during the shareholders meeting today, Chapek was forced to speak up in support of Kennedy when one Texas shareholder dropped the surprisingly aggressive question of what does it matter whether he's from Texas or not? Cheryl dropped the surprisingly aggressive question of whether or not Chapek was planning on firing Kennedy and installing the Mandalorian showrunner John Favreau as the head of Star Wars. In response to that, Chapek said that we look forward to having Kathy directing these activities, the activities of the entire Lucasfilm operation for many years to come. It seems Disney is fully committed to sticking behind Kathleen Kennedy for the time being. If you're confused about all of this, there's been a sustained and pretty ugly campaign within the Star Wars fandom to have Kathleen Kennedy fired and replaced at the head as the head of Lucasfilm. The movement really kicked into gear following the generally well-received Star Wars The Force Awakens. Kennedy was at the forefront of... Which, yeah, I didn't mind The Force Awakens. Kennedy was at the forefront of building the Star Wars anthology films like Rogue. It was still a copycat of, you know, everything that was George Lucas's episode four, but whatever. It was better than the other two. Kennedy was at the forefront of building a Star Wars anthology of films like Rogue One and Solo, which I both enjoyed, but rumors swirled that behind the scenes, Kennedy was clashing with the top up and coming directors she had tapped, Gareth Edwards, Josh Trank, Chris Miller, and Phil Lord to retain a controlling head over the shape of the franchise. Ironically, Kathleen got even more trouble with Star Wars fans after The Last Jedi for letting director Ryan Johnson have too much control. Absolutely. The Last Jedi was a pretty dark turn for all involved with making it, with Kennedy Johnson and star Kelly Marie Tran receiving the brunt of online trolling and hate, which is completely irrelevant because you can't hold people online accountable uh, for your own actions. It has nothing to do with Kathleen Kennedy. It has nothing to do like, with... They're, I get blamed for people trying to say stuff just because uh, they're subscribers of mine. It's like that it's completely irrelevant. You can't blame someone just because they have a association in some sort of sense or they subscribe to someone. It's like, it's ridiculous. Now, with Kathleen Kennedy, uh, what I learned from Mark from his interview with uh, Ryan Johnson was that Ryan actually went to pitch 
his own treatment for Star Wars at Lucasfilm. And the response was, hey, why don't you just direct episode eight? So should I really be mad at Ryan? No, not really. I'm mad at Kathleen Kennedy for putting him in charge. Um, the final strike, she also put Pablo Hidalgo in charge, I should mention, because when George was around, he was just, uh, I believe he was just the internet guy. Uh, the final strike was Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, which pleased little to no one in its questionable attempt to pave over Johnson's film with a movie that only squandered the sequel trilogy storylines and confused the larger Star Wars mythology, rather serving as final payoff to the Skywalker saga. While the Star Wars movies have been struggling to find equilibrium within the fandom, the team behind Star Wars animated and live action series have been on a meteoric rise. That list includes Dave Filoni, John Favreau, Deborah Chow, and Taika Waititi, who all directed standout episodes for The Mandalorian. That creative team has made Star Wars TV a mainstream hit, connected the live action and animated TV in significant ways, The Bad Batch, and expanded Star Wars live action TV into an entire universe of multiple series that are now in development. Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, The Book of Boba Fett, Ranger of the New Republic. For now, it looks like that team of successful Star Wars TV creators will remain under Kathleen Kennedy. It will be interesting to see how things go when the next round of Star Wars films are released. Okay. And there are a million different reports. And like, these are all just different articles. Uh, you guys can go check it out. Boom, boom, boom. There's like thousands. Well, maybe not thousands, but hundreds. And I'm sure everyone's making videos about it too. So the thing with this is that, look, I don't care. I don't give a crap who is in charge. OK, anybody could be in charge of Lucasfilm. It doesn't matter to me. It matters who you put in charge of these different projects. So for me, it could be, uh, I don't know, the leader of the, the creator of Star Trek, who, let's say, is very scornful towards Star Wars and let's say and just wants it to crash and burn. But if you put the right people in charge, what do I care? But when these executive people, these suits, as I call them, they start to take these executive decisions in terms of the story and they deem they know what's best. That's when I have an issue with it. And that's when I feel like Star Wars just crashes and burns. Case in point, the sequel trilogy, which had no outline whatsoever. And that wasn't necessarily because of J.J. Abrams or Ryan Johnson. It was because of the people who put those people in charge and said, hey, here's the outline of what we're doing. There's no proper construct or, or outline of anything. So just have at it. And I feel like that's just the worst way to go about anything, especially when you're in charge. You're managing a huge, huge corporation and team. You need to really know what the hell you're doing in terms of the sequel trilogy, right? Especially, and I've said it a million times, when they said they would buy George Lucas's treatment and they, they did that and they said they were going to use from it and then they just discarded it. I mean, what garbage is that? I'm not happy about it. I think that's a big slap in George's face and it's testament to the fact that he didn't even show up the, to the freaking premieres in episode eight or nine. So, hey, look, I would love to love the sequel trilogy. I'm a Star Wars fan since I was as young as I can remember, but a George Lucas Star Wars fan at that. And the stories, I feel like, are losing their way. They're losing their momentum. They're losing their magic because they're just going so far from the apple has fallen very far from the tree in my opinion and the tree being george lucas and i feel like john favreau and dave filoni are the only ones that really understand george lucas's star wars and i feel like they're the only ones that really can take this story back to what it was and continue the legacy of what created this whole thing to begin with the four billion dollars that disney bought so i feel like if we're really going to succeed with star wars I don't care if it's Kathleen Kennedy in charge. I don't care if it's Bob Chapek in charge of Disney or or, or Bob Iger or or uh, who cares? It could be Bib Fortuna for all I care. OK, seriously, give Bib Fortuna Lucasfilm and, and it doesn't matter to me. As long as he puts the right people in charge. Don't care. And you don't get involved. I don't care what you do. It doesn't matter. So that's what I think of that. Um, what do you guys think about it? This is the first time I'm actually looking at chat. <laughs> Over 3,200 of you. Cool. What's going on? Let's read chat a little bit. You just said you don't care who is in charge, but Kathleen, yeah, well, rewind it if you want a more clarification. How could anyone trust her leadership after the sequels and the Battlefront games? 
I don't trust her leadership. I don't think her leadership is great when it comes to Lucasfilm. I think she's done a lot of great stuff within um, movie history, but I don't think she's done anything great at Lucasfilm. I think the greatest thing she ever did was to put John Favreau and Dave Filoni in charge, and that was it. And she's been constantly lying to the fans, saying that, oh, yeah, we have a direct outline for everything. And then you get John Boyega and Danny, uh, uh, Daisy Ridley coming out and telling us the truth, being like, look, yeah, we didn't know what the hell was going on. And here we are as fans saying that, oh, you know, their performance was bad or whatever. It's like, how good can your performance be when you don't know where your character is going to end up? It's not going to be easy. It's like, did, are you... It's, it's not... An easy, you have to know where your character starts and ends. You can't have this sort of like aloof, like, oh, I don't know. And then you're going to be acting in a certain way. And then in the end, it's like, oh, my God, no, it's completely a different story to what I was acting. It's like, well, of course, it's going to be weird. And there was no outline for any of that. So who's in charge? Kathleen Kennedy. Right? It's not really the kid's fault. It's not Ryan Johnson or J.J. Abrams. You know, they're only, um, their creativity is maxed out to their potential. And whatever that is, well, that's a different discussion. You guys can figure out their potential. But um, I don't think she is a competent leader when it comes to Lucasfilm. Um, that doesn't mean she's a bad person. doesn't mean anything like that. I just don't think that she's the right one to be in charge of it. So long as she continues to make these executive decisions where she kind of puts her nose in the storyline of everything and puts the wrong people in charge like she did with Ryan and blah, blah, blah. But... Then when she puts the right people in charge, things go well. So really, it's a matter of who she chooses. So I, it's kind of like roulette at this point. You don't really know. You're just throwing the ball in there, and it's it's spinning, and you don't really know what you're going to get. Which number is it going to land? Is it going to land on a Ryan Johnson? Is it going to land on a John Favreau? That's what I'm worried about. So, uh, dude, I just hope, you know, John and Dave take it from here. And uh, uh, Deborah Chow is, you know, I think she's done a great job. I think Taika Waititi is great. I think all these guys that worked on The Mandalorian are amazing filmmakers. Um, well, you know what? I think Ryan Johnson is, is an amazing filmmaker. I just don't think he should ever touch Star Wars. I think J.J. makes... He can make fine movies, but he just shouldn't touch Star Wars because he's just not creative, in my opinion. Everything that they pulled from has been stuff from Legends, and then they just kind of tried to make sense of it and threw it all together in a mishmash, hit blend, hit frappe, and that was it. And they're like, here you go. It's like, well, that's not really how it works, bro. Like, So how to fix it? Fine. Keep her in charge. She can keep directing Lucasfilm. I don't care. But just let Dave Filoni and John Favreau continue the story. Let them be the ones in charge of the creative department of the Lucasfilm story group, let's say, and take it from there, you know? I think the suits should handle the numbers and then the creative imaginative people should handle the creative imaginative things such as the story, which is where this whole company will get their money. That's my thoughts on it. <sighs> Anyways, um, we'll see what happens, boys and girls. Uh, I don't really know. George ruined Star Wars when he sold it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So we'll, we'll see what happens from here. And as I said, look, I'm just... Um, it's all about who you put in charge. That's really all it comes down to. And um, please tell me the Ryan Johnson trilogy isn't going to happen, right? Apparently it is happening. Yeah, it's another thing. Apparently the Ryan Johnson trilogy is happening. So... Um, what do I think of Geode? Interesting character. No, I don't think it's dead. Because remember, we still have John Favreau and Dave Filoni. So, it's far from dead. This is just something... And people should not be running with their thoughts on this. Being like, oh my god, it's, it's going to be destroyed. Look, she put John Favreau and Dave Filoni in charge. And maybe now, hopefully, she knows a bit more about who to put in charge. And what works. And they see the numbers, they see the Mandalorian gave them so much money and so much praise and the stock went up and the sequels brought their stock down. Regardless how you feel about it, it is true. So at the end of the day, I feel like she's going to have a bit of uh, maybe there's going to be some people in her ear, you know, from more suits, more executive people being like, look, maybe we can, you know, hire someone else for this. Maybe not.
this guy or this guy. It, it really comes down to if you know Star Wars or not, and I feel like that's really a big issue with with some of these executive people who may know movies and creating movies and doing you know wonderful things, such as she's done with E.T. and Indiana Jones and all that. But when it comes to Star Wars, it's you can't apply that same formula. You really have to live and breathe this stuff. It has to really be ingrained in your DNA. It can't just be a job. It can't just be like, oh, I'm going to add this to my resume. It has to be something that you you are very, very overly passionate about. And it has to be something that you feel within your bones, like for you, that your, your, your mother or your father introduced to you or your friend or some, some, something that really hits you deeply in the soul. That has to do with Star. That's that. That's how Star Wars brought you into this this whole world. I feel like then, like with John and Dave and their and their visionaries, I feel like if you're really passionate about this stuff and it it was really something that was monumental, maybe in your childhood. I feel like that's more so when things are monumental in your childhood. You you tend to have more of a um, nostalgic and emotional response to those things, and usually when you have that. I feel like you take things a little more seriously and you care about them a little bit deeper. So I think that's what we need to do with whoever we hire next. So I hope that she knows that and she understands it's not just, oh, you know, this guy's got a great resume. Let's just put him in charge. It's a lot more than that with Star Wars. So, oh, hey, Kathleen. Hi, Theory. Big fan. Also, hi to my BFF, Drunk3PO. Oh, great. Thank you. Bob's answer to that question was, was we're not a left company or right company. We stay out of politics. We're right down the middle, which is a BS coward. Yeah, I don't, you know, <laughs> I feel like Star Wars has made me more privy to politics than anything else. Any other uh, franchise. Marvel hasn't done that. So it's, it is what it is, man. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't agree with that either, Deborah. I think he's uh, blown smoke. Uh, I need more Star Wars to fuel my ever-growing addiction. Also, I've subbed for almost two years, and I don't think I know your name. My name? Well, you'll know. Well, it was you guys were supposed to know it by now because of the Vader fan film. It was supposed to be out last summer, actually. But um, look what happened, which is unfortunate. So I still want to do it live action, but I've been thinking about Maybe I should just do it all CG, but I really don't want to do that. So we'll see. Chapek only mentioned Star Wars twice in that meeting, and that was in name only. He didn't say anything about any upcoming Star Wars projects like he did for Marvel, so don't get too worried. I'm not worried, man. I'm just cautious, I'd say. Yeah, so... <laughs> there you go. Can I take over Lucasfilm? Hey, look, I'll tell you this much. If I make enough money, and there's some things that I'm working on with Mark, um, if I make enough, let's say, let's say I make about 10 to $15 billion, I will definitely have some lawyers present Lucasfilm uh, an offer. And I mean, they, they, of course, they can decline, but um, I'd be very serious about it, for sure. It would be fantastic. General theory on happy news. Thank you for making DBZ channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my DBZ channel is linked down below now if you want to check it out um, on the channel. Click the homepage. Oh, I didn't read some of your guys' soups. I'm sorry. Completely agree with you. Give KK some rope and keep an eye on the discussions she makes, decisions she makes, and more importantly, the decisions she refrains from making. I need more Star Wars. General theory on happy news. Thank you. Uh, you should create your own sci-fi IP. You have too many great stories to tell to be held back by another IP. And you have the following. If you need concept art, let me know. I think it's a great way forward for you. Yeah, that's always been something in the works and wanted to do. Um, the time will come, but not yet. I think Ryan is a good director, but he got caught with the sequel, so he was unable to tell his story. I'm looking forward to his new movies. I think he's a fine movie maker, filmmaker, but I just don't think he knows Star Wars. That's all. You know, I don't think he knows Star Wars with anything that George Lucas created. So, the first question asked was, Gina and Pedro both posted similar types of comments, yet Gina got fired and Pedro didn't. 
are you blacklisting certain comments? And then the guy said, is this the way? What? Really? Toxic fans ruined Star Wars by forcing George to sell Lucasfilm. Yeah, I'm down with that. Reposting my super chats. By the way, in the meeting, Disney announced an ad exchange, which means they forecast more users and content across Disney Plus and Hulu. Hmm. I mean, 100 million is nothing to sneeze at. 100 million users? If I understand that correctly, that's insane, man. What, Netflix is at what? Like 300 something million and they've been around forever? Star Wars is a classic. <sighs> Arthurian Hero's Journey, which makes it laughable that they failed to stick to the formula. It's like screenwriting 101. There's still room to play with that mold, e.g. Mando. Oh, man, there's so much room to play with so much of that stuff. Your thoughts on Goku Ultra Ending? Find out on the other channel on Dragon Ball Theory. I saw you comment on a Raimi Spider-Man theme music video. Are excited about the possible Spider-Verse? Yeah. Toby was my childhood, dude. My coworkers and I are listening to this right now, and he said, and I quote, this man is speaking straight up facts right now. I appreciate it, Callista. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I'm not one to be like, oh, she needs to be fired. She's garbage, blah, blah, blah. It's like, look, she's made some terrible decisions, and she's ruined Star Wars, in my opinion, in a lot of different ways. But to say that she should be fired, look, if she's willing to acknowledge the fact that, look, I made some mistakes, and I need to course correct i think everyone deserves a chance to fix and change their ways is there a point where it gets to be a little bit too much and it's like look uh you had too many chances here you got to get out yes but if she just does the number crunching side and stays over there in her lane and she lets the creative side stay in their lane and do their thing like i said i don't care who's in charge you are truly the heart of this fandom lucasfilm owes you more than they will ever know Thank you for helping keep my love alive for Star Wars in these dark times. Oh, well, thank you. But I also owe Lucasfilm a lot, too. The original Lucasfilm um, before Disney bought it. You know, and, and a lot of you guys have been saying, oh, you've gotten more and more bitter. It's like, no, I've, I've gotten more and more aware and less starry-eyed, you know, and less hopeful. And um, I would say just a little bit more realistic with what's going on. So... I'm still me. How would you feel about a Grievous series where he is a Kalish warrior and how Dooku found him and eventually Grievous getting his lightsabers? A Grievous spinoff would be pretty sweet, and I bet you a lot of people would love that. Would you leave YouTube if you bought Lucasfilm? No, because I'd vlog every day inside Lucasfilm. Are you kidding me? Look, like I said, I don't need to continue YouTube now, um, but I do it because I love it and I love Star Wars. So... Take that for what it is. I agree. She's welcome to handle the business side, but she really should leave the creative decisions, hirings, and production to the Star Wars pros. Yeah, absolutely, man. Look, uh, Lucasfilm is a very... It was like Santa Claus to me as a kid, all right? I wanted to work at ILM. I wanted to work at Lucasfilm. Um, Funny enough, I'm doing this now, and this was never a job that I tried to do. I never was like, I'm going to be a Star Wars YouTuber. It's like, no, dude, I was doing other stuff, and I was making great money doing that. And then I fell into this, and I'm like, you know what, dude? I love this. This is so cool. I wish I could. Like, this is stuff that I was, and I'm a big advocate of, of making your hobby your career, because then you're never really working. This is stuff I was doing all my life talking about Star Wars, theorizing about Star Wars, having fun with Star Wars. And that's why when I came up with the channel and it happened, I had all these ideas and I just, people were like, how did you do this? Where'd you come from? It's like, well, this is like 20 something years of me in my head, you know? Or the goat, mad love. Yo, love you too, man. Appreciate it. Um, working on some new stuff for you guys. It's going to be a lot of new content coming your way. So stay tuned, especially during the slow times. <laughs> all right. Let's stick on topic. I love you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, what do we got here? What do you think of Patty Jenkins directing Rogue Squadron? Look, I'm never... Understand this about me. I'm never someone that's going to be like, this person is directing. Oh, my God. It's going to be garbage. Blah, blah, blah. I am a real... Uh, let's, what, what's the word? I don't know what the word is, but I will wait until the product is delivered to me, until the meal is prepared and I eat it. 
and I see what it tastes like, and if it tastes like doo doo, then I'm gonna say it tastes like doo doo. But if it's amazing, great. So you have to also realize that just like with Ryan Johnson, it wasn't just him. It was Kathleen Kennedy and so many other creatives around him. And that's why when Mark Hamill behind the scenes in that video, he said, I'm going to make them pay for what they did. Of course, he was joking. But in a sense, you know, he meant it. There were they. It wasn't just one person. It was like, I'm going to make him pay. There were a lot of people. And so that's that's the that's the thing. It's that there are so many people that get involved with this creative decision of creating something. And that's why I think movie making is one of the most beautiful forms of art that ever existed and will ever exist because you have literally every form of art coming together to make one project. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, system. I think she learned with the sequel's backlash. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. And that's, that's what I'm trying to say, you know. Just moved to Georgia working for solar. Oh, cool. Been watching for years. Just want to say your vids are what keep me going, man. Seriously, thank you. You inspired me to write a short film. Awesome, dude. That makes me happy to hear that I, uh, I did something. I did a thing. Uh, if I if I make your day a little bit more enjoyable, and I'm happy. Um, how can I develop my fan fiction? I love your shows. Um, just don't be afraid of what people will think. And by the way, I'm working on a new fan fiction, guys. Uh, what if Ahsoka was at the temple during Order 66? I think it'll be fun. It's time to get back to fan fix. Ever thought of a collab with Adam Savage making movie props costumes? Oh, that'd be awesome. I used to watch him as a kid on Mythbusters. Yeah, so it'd be sweet. Um, I'm sure I missed a lot of your messages, so I'm going to go ahead and read them. Parth says, oh, hells nah. It's treason then. Okay, she's a great producer outside of Star Wars. Star Wars is in such a situation anyways that a second chance may not be a bad idea. And what I'm thinking is maybe she learned from a lot of the mistakes, right? So that's... I'm trying to look on the bright side instead of, you know, like, oh, crap. Because, look, if I go, oh, my God, it's doomed, it's done, it's over, and it actually ends up being over and doomed, then, well, we're going to get that out. We're going to get that outcome regardless. So might as well, in this point, I'm going to be a little bit optimistic and be like, look, let's just hope she puts the right people in charge like she has. I have high hopes for the Kenobi show. I think it's going to be blowing the Mandalorian out of the water. I think it's going to blow any of the shows out of water, and I think it's going to be fantastic. So, And that's simply because you got Deborah Chow, Dave Filoni, John Favreau on board with it, and I think it's going to be great. They don't care because of the Marvel money. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I guess. Um, opinions on Anakin's betrayal, the music, it's one of my favorite pieces. What if Yoda died during Order 66 and Mace did not rush Palpatine? Yes, not bad. Uh, this is not ideal. I feel the writing, the classical themes from mythology, all of it will suffer. It's a sad day. May the force be with us all, says Wesley. Yeah, man, you know, I feel you, but I think let's just, let's just keep our morale up and we'll judge things as they come. I'm not saying be blind. I'm just saying judge them as they come. No, 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 no. I agree. She hasn't been good, but maybe the people around her will start to course correct and be like, yeah, maybe we're not going to do that this time. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see. We'll see. P.S. Just for laughs, I bought two Rebel symbol stickers for my die, for my hard hat and put them on. I drive a machine. It looks like <laughs> that's what life's all about, dude. Just uh, having fun. Look. Yeah, I'm not going to get morose and realistic, but there will be a substantial reward for one who finds the Millennium Falcon. You are free to use any methods necessary, but I want them. I want them alive. The franchise made it 6.5 movies before they dropped the ball. It's how you bounce back. I think they're going to bounce back, man. I really do. And this is not to say that Kathleen Kennedy is going to make it bounce back. Maybe she will. Maybe she learned from the things that she's done. And she's like, OK, you know what? That really wasn't the best direction I could have taken things. Maybe this time I'm going to do this and have a direct concrete outline of everything, have a plan, hire the right people who are unbelievable, not just people who are like passionate about Star Wars. Look, I'm going to be real with you for a sec. Let's say you're in the movie industry and you're a producer or a writer or, or a director or whatever. This is your job. You want to get paid a crazy amount of money to do a great job at what you're good at. So will you ever turn down something like Star Wars to put on your resume 
because the buck ain't going to stop at, you know, this movie or that movie. You're going to keep doing this hopefully forever. So when someone gets proposed, hey, do you want to do a Star Wars project? You would be out of your mind to say no. If this is your career, I mean, it's like kind of winning an Oscar. It's, it's as an actor. I mean, it's 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 you get to put that on your resume. It's like, oh, this guy directed Star Wars and you're going to go on forwards from there. But with that, there's a ton of pressure and backlash. But at the same time directed a star wars movie or you had something to do with a star wars movie now the issue with that is everyone is going to say yes because your product is amazing and it's, it's it is what it is but the problem is you really got to do a very you got to do your due diligence to make sure that you are hiring the right kind of people because everybody's going to say yes right so it really comes down to the person in charge who is appointing their next apprentice you can't just give it to anybody. Everyone wants to use the force. Everyone wants to shoot force lightning. Everyone wants a lightsaber. But some of them might cut off their limbs. Some of them might go on a rampage and like swipe a lot of people. But others, the right ones, will actually meditate and use the force for good and become a Jedi and pass on their teachings to the next person. And that's the person that you got to look for. I just used a Star Wars reference for making Star Wars movies. Kathleen Kennedy has learned nothing. She doesn't care about Star Wars. You know... I think she cares about her job, and so in a weird way, she maybe does care about Star Wars, but I don't think her heart and soul is in Star Wars. I don't think she necessarily really knows what is going on over there. I don't think she knows what Star Wars is about. I think she worked with George for a long time and built his trust, and she did some amazing work on previous movies, but she never really... She wasn't the right fit for Star Wars. She's the right fit for movie making. It's a very big difference. It's completely different. And so that's why I feel like with her doing her thing and John Favreau and Dave Filoni doing their thing, I think it could work as long as John and Dave have creative freedom to do what they want. Otherwise, we're doomed. KK is going to ride this missile all the way to the end. It's little wonder that the one thing that she didn't touch worked and wasn't a garbage fire. Right. Just don't touch anything. Just stick on your side, do do your job, but don't worry about the creative side. And George was smart enough to understand this. He said that I don't micromanage the business side. I have no interest in it. I don't care about it. I care about the storytelling, the creative side. I micromanage the directing. And that's why it excelled, because it was his story, and he did what he was best at. He didn't say, oh, you know what? I'm the king here. I'm going to do the marketing, the business side. And the story side, it's like, no, you spread yourself too thin. You got to focus on what you're passionate about, and what you ultimately want to do, not just for a paycheck. And that's what George was about. He really cared about his baby. That's why he was successful. No disintegrations. Loving the optimism. If I'm not mistaken, episode five was received poorly because of how dark it was. Now it's one of the best Star Wars movies. Maybe 10 years from now um, will let us like episode eight to nine. Hey, man, there are a lot of people that today love episode eight and nine and more power to them. I don't, you know, and when I saw nine, I loved it because I was so happy at the fact that they fixed Luke to the best of their ability. But that doesn't justify me to like a movie that was ultimately crap and wasn't made with any sort of um, care or respect or storyline. So eventually I came to and I came around. So, I mean, if in 10 years people are going to like ep episode 8 and 9, more power to them, um, I don't think I will, you know, in 100 years. I'll be dead, but, you know, so write it on my tombstone. Still doesn't, I still don't like episode 9. <laughs> episode 8 and 9. People always say KK is a great producer and refer to films she was affiliated with, but I've never once heard of anything she actually did. Suspicious. Yeah, and look, I'm going to be real. I don't know everything she actually did. I just know from talking to Mark that she's done a lot of great stuff in movies, and she was a great pioneer. And we would Jurassic Park with the VFX in Jurassic Park. She did a lot of big things there. And yeah, you know, I should research more, but I frankly don't need to know more than the people that I trust who tell me that she's done a lot of great things. And I mean, her credits are all throughout film history E.T., Indiana Jones. She was working with George Lucas. Jurassic Park, and she's done a lot of pioneer work, and at the time it was explained to me and I understood it, but it seems to have gone from my mind at that point because I just don't hold on to information that I don't really need. But that being said, you can Google it. Uh, I've seen KK's name 
on the OG Indiana Jones movies, but what was all right? Let's all right. All right. Okay. Let's search it up. Let's figure this out right now. It'll be a learning day for all of us. Okay. Here we go. All righty. <clears throat> Her first film as a producer was E.T., a decade later, again with Spielberg, she produced Jurassic Park franchise, the first two of which became two of the top 10 highest grossing films in the 1990s. In 1992, she co-founded the Kennedy Marshall Company with her husband, Frank Marshall. On October 30, 2012, she became the president of Lucasfilm after the Walt Disney Company acquired the company for over $4 billion. She received the Irving... Huh. Kennedy has participated in the making of over 60 films that garnered eight Academy Award nom nominations and earned over 11 billion worldwide, including three of the highest grossing films in motion picture history. As a producer, she is third behind Kevin Feige and Steven Spielberg in domestic box office receipts with over 7.5 billion as of 2020. She was born in California. She continued her education at San Diego State University, where she majored in telecommunications and film. In her final year, Kennedy gained employment at a local San Diego TV station, taking on various roles, including camera operator, video editor, floor director, and finally, production coordinator. After her employment with KCST, she produced a local talk show entitled You're On for the situation for four years before moving to Los Angeles. In L.A., Kennedy secured her first film production job working on as an assistant to John Milius, who at the time was the executive producer of Steven Spielberg, 1941. During the production of 1941, while working with screenwriter John Milius, Kennedy came to the attention of Steven Spielberg. I remember Kathy came into the room with her steno pad and pencil, and she was horrible at taking notes. She was terrible and didn't know how to do it very well. But what she did know how to do was interrupt somebody in mid-sentence. Spielberg was so impressed with Kennedy's organizing skills that he asked her to be his secretary. As Kennedy continued to make creative contributions, Spielberg gave her more responsibilities and challenges. Kennedy was credited as associate to Spielberg on Raiders of the Lost Ark, then associate producer on Spielberg's production. Poltergeist. She began receiving producer credit with Spielberg on major box office hit E.T., and continued serving the role on most of his films for the next three decades. In 1981, she helped co-found and run the production company of Amblin Entertainment with Spielberg and her future husband, Frank Marshall. She also produced Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom with George Lucas and Frank Marshall and appeared in the film's opening sequence as a dancer. Following her work on the Indiana Jones film, she rose to become one of Hollywood's leading producers. With Amblin, she produced the Back to the Future trilogy, collaborating with such directors as Martin Scorsese, Robert Zemeckis, Barry Levinson, and Clint Eastwood. She took over a large portion of running of Amblin and served as its president until 1991. When she and Marshall formed the Kennedy Marshall Company with her with a deal at DreamWorks, she continued her business relationship with Spielberg and became producer for Jurassic Park, an executive producer for the historical drama Schindler's List. And executive during the 80s and 90s, Kennedy served on the advisory board of the National Student Film Institute and in 1991 was a Grimmy Award recipient in recognition of her outstanding support of student filmmaking. Kennedy was also an honorary chairperson of the Institute. In 1995, she was awarded the Women in Film Crystal Award for Outstanding Women who, through their endurance and excellence of their work, have helped to expand the role of women within the entertainment industry. In 96, she received the Golden Plate Award for the American blah, 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 by Awards Council member George Lucas. In 07, she was the first recipient of Women in Film's Paltrow Mem Mentorship Award for showing extraordinary commitment to mentoring and supporting the next generation of filmmakers and executives. Kennedy was a producer on Spielberg's films War of the Worlds and Munich or München, the later, the latter, which earned her an Academy Award nomination. Marshall and Kennedy were producers for the U.S. versions of two Studio Ghibli 
Ghibli animated features Ponyo and the Secret World of Arietti. Keep going here. She stepped down from Kennedy Marshall, leaving Marshall as sole principal of the film. In the following month, Kennedy became co-chair of Lucasfilm alongside George Lucas. On October 30th, when Lucas sold to Lucasfilm to Disney, Kennedy was promoted to president. In 2018, Kennedy's contract to remain president of Lucasfilm was extended another three years through October 30th, 2021. For 2001, oh, do you want you guys want me to keep going? Should we keep going here? Filmography. Executive producer, Gremlins, Young Sherlock Holmes, which this was actually, uh, oh no, wait, that, that's the Young Indiana Jones, never mind. Back to the Future, The Goonies, Fandango, American Tale, Battery, I mean, she's, she's definitely done a lot. Back to the Future Part 3, Cape Fear, Jesus. She's done a, a ton, man. But look, it's all producer, co-executive producer, executive producer, producer. Nowhere does it say storyteller or writer or anything like that. So this woman is unbelievably gifted in producing and she knows how to produce something, but she shouldn't be in charge of anything to do with the storytelling and where the story goes at all. No one can take away any of her achievements. She's done some commendable and amazing things um, for women in the film industry, for herself, and for the movies that a lot of us really love. And she's produced them quite well. But look, a producer is not a director. A producer is not a writer. A producer is not a storyteller. And this is something that no matter how accredited you are and how many badges you have on, you know, your your list, your crevasse, uh, you should never be touching a story. Yeah, dude. She's done an amazing job. Um, but like I said, this just really solidifies. And I learned something from this stream, you know. Um, she shouldn't be touching story. This just really solidifies that fact. Yeah, produce it all you want. You're an amazing, amazing producer. Fantastic. But don't touch story. No, no, homie, I get it. I get it. But... Producing something and writing something are totally different. Producing something and directing something are different. So I'm going to make an article about this. About what? Technician trying to be an engineer. Yeah, precisely. You know, it's, look. In a company, we have to... It's it's like... let let's Let's reverse it. Let's take Ryan Johnson and let's give him Kathleen Kennedy's job. This is... That's the exact same thing here. You know, and I think that we should really stay in our own lanes and we should understand our strengths. It's like the Avengers, man. It's like you don't see freaking uh, Hawkeye trying to be the Hulk because he's freaking Hawkeye. You don't try to see Hulk being Hawkeye. It's the same thing. It's like they each bring value to the team in their own way. And when you come together, you make this beautiful thing. It's like a recipe for, let's say, I don't know, a cake or a, a dinner. You got to put a little bit of salt, a little of the pepper, you know, some of the meat. You got to put a little bit of, I don't know, whatever. Rice, whatever. Vegetables. But you can't call the salt, throwing the salt in there and say, yeah, it's going to be the meat, it's going to be the vegetables, it's going to be everything. Why does everything Why does everything revert back to food for me? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Um... That's interesting. Yeah. So. She's very credited. But. As this gentleman says. Just be the boss. Just don't dictate. Absolutely. You know. Don't even be the boss. Just produce it. Yeah. I wish someone could fix Star Wars. Well they are. 
And their name is Dave Filoni and John Favreau. I'm doing a good job. If they're let to do their job, you know, um, it's like, uh, what was that, that scene in Troy? Um, was it Agamemnon who said this? It's like, I don't need to control him. And they're speaking about uh, um, Achilles. You just need to, you, you don't need to control him. You need to unleash him. And that's all they need to do. Just unleash John Favreau and Dave Filoni. They're like freaking Achilles, dude. That's all they are. It's like, just, they will take the reins and they will take this company to where you want it to go and where it has, has been with George Lucas. It's all you need to do. <sighs> yeah. Anyways, Rogue One is the best Disney Star Wars film. Would you want Gareth Edwards to direct again? Yeah, I think he did a good job. But again, look, I'll say this. Um, it doesn't even matter if Dave Filoni and John Favreau direct anymore because it's like if their hands are tied and they can't do what they want, then you're not really getting their, their full output. Star Wars games have been doing wonderful, like Battlefront 2, after it got fixed in Jedi Fallen Order, and they will continue to do so, I hope. Me too. And supposedly we will get Star Wars games like we got years ago. Yeah, I hope so, man. That'd be great. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't care about politics. Like, I don't care what your politics are. I mean, up here in Canada, we don't, it's not nearly as politically driven as it is in the States. Um, there isn't a political divide as big as there is in the States. And being a Star Wars fan has <laughs> actually taught me more about politics than anything else. So, um, yeah, dude, I don't care what anyone's politics are who are in charge of this stuff. Just don't touch the story and let that be for the and and of course don't put politics and that goes for both sides don't put your politics in in a story that doesn't where it doesn't belong if you're gonna put politics put timeless politics in there if she can stay in her lane i think there could be hope i feel like that's a big if but we'll see yeah look stay in your freaking lane do your job you are an amazing producer as we can see here stay in the lane do that you know it's it's very easy it's like that's like me telling john favreau and dave filoni to uh I don't know, start, well, they probably could produce it too, but anyways, everyone has a job. Everyone's given a job. Don't try to make your job to be someone else's job and vice versa. Stick with the thing that you've been given. So there's, a con again, a con concrete outline. Everyone's given a job to do a certain thing. It's not rocket science, man. That's, that's why this stuff exists. What kind of backroom deal do Bob and Kathleen have going on that compels him to cover her? Yeah, I mean, look, he probably respects George and probably, let's be honest here. You know, George put her in charge and maybe he respects George and he's like, yeah, let's, you know, but I really don't think they do respect George. I think they just say that crap. If they did, they would have gone with his story. And it would have uh, had his help on it, too. It's always been my dream to work at Lucasfilm with Dave and George on Clone Wars. Yeah. It was always my dream to work at Lucasfilm, too. It's funny enough, I had a dream last night where uh, I met George Lucas, and it was so vivid, and it was so real. I was asking him for an autograph. <laughs> I have a video idea. What if Ahsoka never left the Jedi Order? Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, sorry, but this shouldn't come as news. Of course, she wasn't going to step down. Yeah, but now it's been confirmed, so this is not ideal... I feel the writing, the classical themes from mythology, all of it will suffer. It's a sad day. May the force be with us all. Dylan, thanks, man. Thanks, Wesley. She's a great producer outside of Star Wars. Star Wars is in such a situation anyways that a second chance may not be a bad idea. Yeah. In sports, the manager coming out and praising the coach means that the coach is getting fired. I suspect the situation might follow the same rule. Don't think so. Couldn't agree with you more. Thanks, man. Thank you, Steve. What you just described sounds a lot like what happened to Zack Snyder and Warner Bros. with Justice League. Yeah, now we're getting the Snyder Cut. Kathleen Kennedy is not a leader. She needs to step down. The fact that they had potential to make so many cool characters, Finn, Kylo, etc., and completely fumbled it is one of the main reasons I find it hard to enjoy the sequels. I agree with that. 
Well, I would say it's not even the characters. I would say the story in general is just, you know, so was, but look, like I said, again, you know, uh, as long as you have the right people in charge, I think it's going to be okay. I think it'll be fine. I think Ryan is a good director, but he got caught, caught with the sequels. I'm done with Star Wars after 44 years. I will not watch anything they produce from here on out. Done. Fire Kathleen. Rehire Gina. Fire Kathleen. Rehire Gina. Um, well, I'm excited. I'm excited for anything that John and Dave produce. So. And look. Like I said, once again, I will continue to watch, but I will be. There will be no filter on my mouth. I mean, I'm going to tell you guys how it is, how I feel about things always. And, uh, you know, in the past, I was blind to the fact that <laughs> it could be in this much of a mishmash and handled so poorly. But uh, at this point, look, man, you get the right people behind it. It's going to be great. I don't care who you got producing or in charge or anything. I've watched Star Wars since I was seven, 1996. Uh, Star Wars was a universe which I was able to escape when I was bullied and abused as a kid. Rest in peace, Star Wars. Uh, you know, I watched it the same time you did. I think I'm a year older than you. I was six years old. But uh, I don't think it's dead, bro. I really don't. I really don't. And besides, you think, you think they were going to fire her and put John and Dave in charge? It was never going to happen. Let's be real. Let's be real. I, I don't know what the future holds for Star Wars anymore. All I know is that it's a future I want to part. I want no part in. I'll support John and Dave, though. I feel you. Can't stand Kennedy. I wish Dave and John ran Star Wars. Kennedy said there wasn't any content to go by for the new trilogy. So dumb. Yeah, she, yeah, she says that. And then they literally take everything from Legends, throw it in a blender, and and say, hey, here, here you go. It's like, well... The whole Palpatine transferring his essence thing, that's nothing new. Huge fan of the channel of the content. Thanks, Simon Ray. Appreciate it, man. Um, I'm ready to start Theory of the Gods channel as God of War lead content. Yeah, I want to start so many new channels. Uh, I just very tied up with all the Star Wars projects that I got going on. But so, you know, I can do one video here and there and start it slow and, you know, enjoy it like that. It's always fun. I love creating, so. Do you think that Dave Filoni is the only one who can save Star Wars? John and Dave. Filoni, Favreau, FF. Everyone hit FF in the chat right now for my boys. Uh, my respect to KK for all the work, but can't condone her forcing modern politics and drama into Star Wars. That would be like advocating for 50-50 male and female nurses when more female nurses for society works just fine. Are those the demographics for nurses? I don't know. I'm not really uh, educated on that. But look, she's done a great job with executive producing all of these different films, and she has a huge track record and experience. But that doesn't mean that she's uh, qualified to be leading the creative team, the creative side of anything. So I guess we'll see, boys and girls. You know, I guess we'll see. Your guess is pretty much as good as mine at this point. My boys in the chat. FF. FF. I love it. FF. FF. Read the title. F respects to the ongoing death and after death killing of Star Wars. It's not dead, bro. It's not dead at all. Star Wars is still very much alive. Okay. Just because she's in charge doesn't change anything. Um, it just means that it's not as great as it could be. But look, if they learn from their mistakes, like I keep saying, like a parrot or like a broken record, and they put the right people in charge, I think it'll be fine. I became a fan when the prequels came out and was happy to become a part of the community. I also liked the sequels. They were fun and expanded the story. Seeing all the negativity and consistent hate is saddening. It absolutely is, but you know what? I don't think there really would be any hate if there weren't these poor decisions being made. Look, if we got a, a sequel trilogy like Mark Hamill wanted, that he continuously kept tweeting and posting and uh, saying before he was 
constantly forced to course correct, I feel like, in my opinion, then you guys remember when Luke came back in The Mandalorian and we had like a good few weeks? That's what it would have been like this whole time. So I've made a video on if Darth Maul trained Luke. What do you think about that concept? That's cool. How can you trust a leader who said there's no source material, but there's lo loads of Legends EU material? It shows how disconnected she is. Yeah, bro, Phil, hit the nail on the head, man. I don't think she knows anything to do with Star Wars. Look, she's a very credited producer, but she doesn't know what the hell she's doing when it comes to Star Wars and Star Wars stories. And that's why we need someone else that's... If she wants to handle the producing side, okay, but let the product be made by the people who should make it, such as the storytellers and the story writers and the people who understand Star Wars. So, right, they, they make the story, they hand it off to her, she produces that. It's it's done, you know? But you don't get any say in the story. That's what I'm talking about. Some people want you to hate Star Wars, so Star Wars power of inspiration and wisdom can be lost and stained. That's why you got those agendas. Don't give up. Don't forget true Star Wars. I never do. And I mean, look, you guys, this has been going on for years and I've just become more. Uh, what's the word? I don't want to say woke. I've gotten more. Uh, privy <laughs> to um, all of the garbage that's been going on behind the scenes. And, and you know, um, if Daisy Ridley and, and uh, John Boyega didn't make it clear enough for us. The proof was in the pudding. And I just feel like my content speaks for itself. You know, I don't need to go on every day and tell you how much I think this is trash or that's trash or this is wrong or that's wrong. I'll do it in these little videos here and there when, you know, there's something comes up and I want to say my piece. But as for my content goes, it's going to continuously revolve around George Lucas Star Wars. That's the Star Wars I grew up with. And it's the Star Wars that's most interesting. And when stuff like the Mando and stuff comes around that I'm genuinely in love with and interested as well because it is continuing along the same line of George's Star Wars, which it's sad I even have to say George's Star Wars and this Star Wars. It should all just be Star Wars, you know, but it's not. And that's because you have the wrong people in charge making executive decisions for people all across the board when they're given a certain job hiring, right? It's like it's like Kathleen Kennedy going and doing VFX. It's like, what? <laughs> no. Or like saying, you know, I have, have a VFX person go and do an executive producing job, her job. It's like you can't. Everyone has a job. Everyone needs to stick to their job. And everyone's good at a certain thing. Stay in your lane. Do your job. And together, you make an amazing project. Very, very simple. Love the work you do. Your stories got me through some rough days. Tough days, alone, driving. Keep up the good work. Stay true to yourself. Oh, thank you, Vince. Hey, we all go through rough days, man. It's life. We all come out of it, too. It's okay. John Favreau should run Star Wars, not Dave Filoni equals hack. Dude, Dave Filoni's not a hack. The hell? They should both run Star Wars. Loved watching you play Battlefront 2 the other day. I was laughing my ass off. You'll beat those toxic players soon. <laughs> Thanks, man. How can a rock be a navigator? Is he a lodestone? Yeah. I don't know. Look. I love that some people are interested in the High Republic. Good for them. But, uh... Yeah, not for me. She has no experience with the universe as large as Star Wars. All she has done is work on the series that is are limited in size. Yeah, and even there, she didn't do a good job, right? So, like I said, let her do the executive producing and let the others do the actual storytelling and the writing. What do you think of this? What if Ahsoka never left the Jedi Order? I think I read yours, Mr. Pelpa Protein. Do you think Rick McCollum could do better on Star Wars? He produced the prequels. Yeah. I like Rick. He was great. He was right there with George, and he made George's life a lot easier. At least it seemed from those... You know what? We got to go back to those bonus DVDs, man. I feel like we got to really... We need to go back to that, dude. 100%. Hundo. Got to return to what... The stuff I enjoy, man. Let's get back to it. I'm down. If only they made Admiral Holdo... Was like General Creel from the Clone Wars, General Creel. If you know what I mean, and I love Mara Jade's story. I don't know what you mean. General Creel died. 
Oh. <laughs> Hello, Star Wars. <laughs> it's been a while since I've joined the stream. Do you think that there's any real uh, potential for George Lucas' sequel trilogy to be made? No. No. Don't. Sadly. <laughs> it's kind of like the Emperor. Only now, at the end, do you realize? Father, please! It's like, stupid boy. I feel like um, they're just too hard-headed, you know? It, that They could end all of this by just simply... Could you imagine if they went on a live stream on YouTube? Like, you got, a, like, Kathleen Kennedy, a few of them, like... And they went on a live stream and they were like, look, guys, like we want to connect with the fans. We love the fans. And um, we understand there are a lot of people that are unhappy with the things and decisions we've made. And we're not saying that, you know, we agree with their uh, rhetoric or agree, agree with them at all in the decisions that we've made because we stand by our decisions. But we want to make things right and we want to have a dialogue and we want to be connected to you guys. And we want this miscommunication let's say to stop could you imagine if they did that and they just opened up and they're like look and they open up the chat they open up the comments like look what's the issue let's just let's just talk that would change so many things man yeah look she would get really okay okay well look have me as a moderator put me in there seriously kathleen carry more like badling enemy Uh, relatively new viewer. Just want to say thank you for doing what you do and all your content. It's really helping me get through some tough times. I love you, bro. I love you too, Poppy Hill. Thanks, man. Thanks for being a new viewer. Appreciate it. Almost about to crack three million subs, and um, that's all thanks to you guys. I couldn't sub to myself three million times. If Admiral Hoda was being a jerk because she was working with the other side like Krell was in that arc. Oh, okay. Right. I like the idea of being the granddaughter of Obi-Wan and the Mandalorian princess. By the way, uh, uh, thanks. Thanks, Lucy. Yo, you remember me? No. <laughs> but you're here, so I love you. It's okay. Does Lucasfilm ever reach out to you? No, they don't. Um, I think the only times Lucasfilm has reached out was when uh, the Pablo thing happened. Um, uh, the Vader fan film, but that's when I reached out to them. Something else I'm missing. Oh, yeah, the Star Wars Celebration um, promo. They they were going to send me some merch, so I made that video, right? The contest for you guys. Uh, I think that's the only time. Yeah. It used to be an EA Games changer, but that changed. Yeah, not going to go into detail. I went into detail for my join members. Um, there were only like 30 of us there. But I feel like it's not really a public affair. And it was a long time ago anyway, so um, whatever. Yeah. Obi-Wan and lovers? Right. Hi. Hi. Would you consider yourself a director? Wait, wait, wait. Would you consider yourself as director of Luxome? Like, say, if I had an idea for a new sequel trilogy and you want to use it, would you consider directing Lucasfilm for it? Uh, I'm confused, man. I, I run a Star Wars fan YouTube channel. I don't... If I ever bought Lucasfilm, let's say that ever happened, uh, I, I wouldn't assume director. 
I'd assume. Uh, overseer <laughs> no if i if, dude if i if i let's say if i bought lucasfilm i would put john and dave in charge and i would say you guys are free to make whatever project you want uh you're free to do whatever you want you don't need to check in with me and i would literally it kind of be like they owned it to be honest i would just get to be on set and like have fun you know it'd be cool uh I want on Disney Plus and asked me to update, so I did. Then asked me to rate the app. I gave it a one star rate and wrote to the com fire KK. Yeah, that kind of stuff isn't going to help them, man. If anything, it just gives, gives them more um, of a rating. I feel like, you know, um, you know. Imagine if all of us instead of just being like, "Oh, fire KK, fire this and that." Which, funny enough, is like seems to be what they they answer to whenever someone uh, the cancel culture gets uh, a little bit of numbers behind them. I think if we all just come together and really eloquently and respectfully outline the problems that we have, you know, almost in a stoic sense, almost in a in a removed sense, I feel like it'll do so much more good, and it's so much more. You're so much more able to listen to someone than if you're uh, yelling or shouting or something like that. You can get the point across in so many different ways. Just some of them, you know, it's like it's like I, I make you like a really, again, with the food. Jesus, uh, I'm a fat boy. It's like I make you a really nice meal and I put it on a silver platter for you and I put it in front of you and I'm like, here you go. Or I make you the same nice meal and I throw it at you and I'm just like, eat this effing meal. You you know, um, or I make a nice meal and I, and I, and I put it on a plate that has like doo-doo on it. It's like, well, well, okay, it's the same meal, but the delivery is very important. So I feel like if we deliver things, I would say in a different manner, then our words would be heard perhaps <sighs> properly instead of being, uh, written off as just, angry or uh toxic or whatever it's it's the words are the same you know what i'm saying when and what do you think the next trilogy will look like for the 10 11 12 they're still doing that direction as much love from the prequel i i don't know if they're going to turn 11 12 and if they do they probably will do it like 20 years from now you know what i'm saying yeah would i let george help yes what I would buy it and just give it to George. Like, look, George, you can keep the four bill. And just take it back. Please. No, you're wrong. They do. They do. They do. Because they are listening and they listen to every single one of us. And the consensus is that Star Wars fans are toxic and this and that. But if each one of us speak very, very eloquently and very normally with facts and how we feel, and we're not just completely, you know, these, you know how like the people who canceled Gina were just very adamant about her being canceled. If we are respectful, I feel, and we talk with a little more, a little less emotion perhaps and detach ourselves, I think we can really get our point across without anyone ever saying anything like toxic or any of that, that bull crap. I think it'll be, uh, received a little more, you know, it's like a Trojan horse. It's like, hey, here you go. And, you know, instead of them having their freaking arms up in the air, oh my God, no, 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 immediately they dismiss what you say. Instead, just be a little bit more, yeah, you know, this is, this is my views and this is what I feel like is, yeah, you know, just speak facts. No one can deny facts. Do people not realize that without Kennedy, we wouldn't get all these future projects? Disney revived Star Wars. Uh, I disagree. I think Star Wars was going to be amazing if George Lucas had stayed with it. No, it's not a Canadian niceness. It's not. Because I have a very, very angry side. But I just know when to bring that out. You know? Yeah, you got to be like Qui-Gon Jinn. You got to be like Luke Skywalker. You can't go in there, you know, with Vader's mentality every time and just 
you know, uh, Vader and, you know, I'll tell you a little story. Vader and Boba were both um, hired to go and capture Boba, uh, Han Solo. Vader did it by guns blazing. He went in there, smashed the door down. And this is actually a comic on my on my channel that I covered. It's called Vader Fights Boba Fett or something like that. Boba goes in there before Vader arrives, stealthily chilling. He is just observing Han Solo from like pretty nearby he's in the same cantina he finds him and he's just chilling in one of the cubicles one of the one of the at one of the tables and um one of the booths and he's just observing han solo from far away and han's just busy with these two girls and everything is under control and then all of a sudden freaking vader comes in guns blazing lightsaber slashing throwing people against walls han solo escapes when it was all under control and he just by Boba Fett's methods. I feel like we got to be a little more like Boba Fett. So. Yeah. Be calm. Don't be soft. Don't confuse that with being soft. Be calm and just get your facts across. That's all I'm saying. I feel like subverting expectations is like serving Italian food or at a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Let's say you, you go for Italian food and you get served Mexican food. It's like, what? I wanted the penne pasta. What, the, what is this? I wanted the fettuccine Alfredo. What is this? Completely off topic. But how about a small collaboration with Tyrone? I believe that you're fans of each other. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I like Tyrone. He's a funny guy. Uh... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Be calm. 100% not soft uh, how can we be respectful of these woke people they hate because we love star wars and don't want wokeness and identity politics and all that crap yeah but we don't want to be like them do we it's the same type of person you're just fighting for a different you're fighting for the opposite it, it's it's the same thing you know but you just need to <laughs> understand that you don't want to be like that if a way is bad, then why am I going to respond in the same exact way with the same energy, but just fighting for different beliefs? It's so ridiculous. It's it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like nothing will get done. This side was like blah, 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 and this side was blah. it's no man. It's like you know a tactic that some cops use is um, there was this one officer that I I, I spoke to who's telling me about um, he pulled over someone once and the guy was just like frantic and he was yelling he's like how could you pull me over I'm late for work why would you give me a ticket you give me a ticket and the cop just goes and the guy shuts up completely shuts up and and he's like he's like why aren't you saying anything. And already he completely chilled the guy out, subdued him. And he's like, look, man, I'm just here doing my job. You were speeding. You were going this and that, doing this and that. And then the guy was receptive to it. But if instead you get someone who's yelling at you and then you start yelling at them, it just builds and builds and builds. And pff, who knows what happens? The guy gets arrested. Someone, it, it just, you know, it's why diffuse the situation if you can. I'm not saying do it all the time. There are some moments when you need to unleash, but uh, choose the battles. You know, exactly. And when you have one side that's very erratic and angry and the other side that's calm and just like what and just displays facts, the facts destroy everything, then <laughs> who's going to look like the idiot? It's the one that's yelling and yammering, right? It's like you got a little chihuahua that's like, mur, 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 and then a big dog's walking by and he's just like, we've all seen that. It's, it's the same thing. Who looks like the weirdo in that situation? It's like, oh, dude, chill, chihuahua. But then if you go both get them barking, you're trying to handle both of them now. And it's like, you don't know who just, you know, it's it make them stand out by letting them kind of make a fool of themselves by being so abrupt and so loud and obnoxious can you release the amethyst crystal sweatshirts again i know it's for a limited time but i've been wanting one for a while now oh yeah yeah i still wear it all the time um i'll release them once i do something again for episode two i just don't feel like i should do that right now um because nothing's going on it's just gonna get people yeah i, I don't want to like yeah so 
Yeah, when the time is right, for sure, I will. Watch Mendo Finale live with you and realize we are in good hands with you as the biggest voice in the fandom. That said, do you feel pressure on our behalf? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sure. And then I realize, I'm like, you know what? That's not what I'm about. I'm about talking about what I think, and that's it. Hey, Thier, I love your content. Always support you in Nerd Theory with Josh. 100% agree with calmly outlining issues. Just curious, what are your top five bullet point issues with KK? Uh, I don't like doing top five stuff unless it's Star Wars facts. Uh, I would say that she isn't receptive to her wrongdoings. I would say, at least publicly, I would say that she doesn't know Star Wars. She doesn't know Star Wars at the heart of it, at the lore. She needs to stay in her lane and not enter the creative side of writing things. She needs to let the professionals do their job just as they're letting her do her job professionally. And she needs to... Um, in my opinion, I think she needs to not involve so many politics with story and just, again, stay out of it and let the professionals handle it. That's really it. Mm, I agree. Oh, well, thanks for everything you guys do, man. I think so. Okay. Someone in chat keeps calling the Star Wars movies just movies. I disagree. They are a generation's equivalent to Roman mythology. Yes, it will be what people look back on in 1,000 years. Look, whether they look back on it or not, right now it's something... You can, you know, there are people that um, get attached to anything. It could be an object. It could be a movie. It could be something that elicits a certain feeling within someone. It's no one else's business to deem whether that's important or not. It's only to the beholder. So Star Wars is something that, for whatever reason, makes us feel so much in our soul. And whether that is, you know, for nostalgic reasons of, oh, you know, when I was a kid and uh, things are more simple when you're a child, you, you know, you don't associate it with having as many, uh, let's say, drama or issues or whatever as you grow older, like we all get, uh, you know, when you adult. Or it's because you really appreciate the story or you look up to these characters from when times when you were at a loss of hope and energy and power. And these characters were something that a beacon of hope that you could look up to and you could you could reach towards and they were the strength that I've, I've mentioned they were the strength for you when you had none regardless of what star wars is for you the fact that you enjoy it and you love it today is all that matters so that being said yeah it is the equivalent to mythology um, superheroes and all that stuff is the literal equivalent to it so Well, sad to hear you say that, Luke, but, you know, I I, uh, I think it's going to be continuously better if we get people that deserve to be in charge to be in charge, right? Whoa, Eric! Theory is the Kevin Smith for Star Wars. <laughs> Will Lucasfilm Games suffer? Keep the Force mystical, and may the Force be with you. Well, thank you, Eric. That's really generous of you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, social justice and postmodernism killed our lore and mythology. It needs to die in order to get back to, back from the abusers. Hey, Theory, I love your content. Always support you in Nerd Theory with Josh. 100% agree with calmly outlining our issues. Just curious, what are your... All oh, right, we, we went through that one. This is outrageous. This is unfair. They do listen, but they do not heed our warnings. Ronald didn't respect Godzilla, so his 98 movie failed with the fans. The new Godzilla universe is doing amazing because Gareth Edwards, Michael Daughtry, and Adam Winger respect and know and love Godzilla and the other monsters. Right, and look at Cobra Kai. You know, you got these three talented men who know what the hell they're doing because they're actual fans of the story. You need to keep a balance, guys. Too many people being way too negative. Luke Skywalker showed us that there is always hope. Completely off topic. Okay, right. 
think I read a few of these already. How do you handle those who don't deal with facts but deal with emotions? In my honest opinion, it seems like many people no longer accept facts but just accept what they believe to be fact. Love the channel. Right, yeah, that's the problem with today's day and age is that people just believe what they want to fear feel. If, they, if you do something that makes them feel a certain way, um, let's say something that elicits anxiety within them, they're going to go with that and they're going to run with that. And they're going to say, oh, what you did caused anxiety. It's like anything can cause anxiety. It's up to you to let that anxiety rule you and define you or not. Anxiety is just an independent system of the body. It's not something that you can control. It just is what it is. If you learn to develop ways and methods to be able to control yourself and not be affected by that anxiety, then it doesn't matter what you're anxious over or not. So therefore, if someone makes you anxious, it's not like it's going to affect you because it doesn't matter. So if to go back to your question, uh, if someone's going to be emotional about something, then you just don't need to continue the conversation because they're not having a clear mind or a calm mind to be able to understand anything that you're saying because they're being ruled by their emotions. Very simple. Have you heard of SWOW? They're doing an autograph signing with Hayden right now. Thought you might want to send the new say. <laughs> That'd be so cool. That'd be sweet. Now I want to. I want to meet Hayden at celebration. That'd be. That'd be cool. Meet him again, but actually say hi this time. When the dust settles and all is said and done, the truth is what is left standing. The lies and fakeness fall away. At its core, Star Wars is real and good, so let's let the last five years of dust settle. Yeah, and maybe they'll turn a new leaf and, you know, we'll get more things with F and F. Oh, that's long gone, man. Long gone. No. What do you mean? She didn't. John and Dave did. And apparently they had to fight for it. She, she gave us Jake Skywalker. What do you mean? I hope I'm understanding your thing right. No. No one's raging war against KK. We need to stick together and we need to display our facts emotionlessly and eloquently so that we may get our facts across in the best way possible without being misconstrued or tainted by emotions by overly sensitive people that may not be able to understand what we're saying just because we're emotional about something. So the best way to do this is to be very calm and explain your things in the most factual way possible and let them get upset. And in the end, it's them who looks like a fool versus you. It's very simple. And maybe they'll be enlightened by the fact that you are being so calm and they'll maybe understand, be like, look, yeah, dude or girl has a point. I'm going to maybe change the way I think for a second and try to understand their point of view. Because at the end of the day, we both want cool stuff for Star Wars. That's all it is. Hey, buddy, big fan, a little late to the party. Would you consider doing a Snyder Cut watch along? May the force be with you. Uh, probably not because I want to, I just want to, sit back and chill and um well i don't know i've been asked to do that we'll see who would you love to have a sit down meet and interview with from the cast of either the originals or the prequels uh george i want to talk with carl weathers uh what game do you think is going to come out of lucasfilm games and do you think there could be a multiverse like marvel which could include legends yeah i think they're already headed for the multiverse right so ahsoka did her own thing she's and we'll probably meet up with her later i believe any human is capable of understanding facts if presented properly uh and if they're not then you don't need them in your life Behind the scenes content for Clone Wars, some amazing insights from George and Dave. Sure, yeah. I'm covering a lot of the behind the scenes for the originals, and I've been really enjoying it. You're an amazing voice for all Star Wars. Can we try to organize a way to get together and make our voices heard in a civil manner? Um, yeah, we're doing it right now. Yeah. So there's been over 3,600 people here, and right now it's 32, and yeah, we're doing it. So. feel safe with your theory as our biggest voice being as genuine and mature as you are is enough well thanks dude you know i've made a lot of mistakes in my life and i've learned from them and i used to be uh, i was young once i 
the basic sequel trilogy because of the politics during the time making of the movies things don't change if name makes a return in the white house uh yeah i don't know we're talking about trump I don't know, dude. <laughs> don't ask me about politics stuff. I just don't really understand it. I don't really know the difference between Trump and Biden, to be honest. Um, and I don't really care to divulge. I just observe what people say on Twitter and this and that. And that's it. Hey, Theory, what would happen if Luke and Boba crossed each other in the Mando finale? Hmm. Luke would kick his ass. What facts am I referring to? Uh, the facts of... What do you mean? Imagine a private panel with George Lucas, Dave Filoni, John Favreau, J.J. Abrams, and Ryan Johnson. What would you ask keeping it calm, respectful, and civil? What would I ask? I would ask him a million things, man. I would ask freaking George Lucas a million things. Uh, I wouldn't pay attention to Ryan Johnson. I wouldn't waste my moment asking Ryan something because he has no place there, in my opinion, with those guys. Right? Yeah, I'm Canadian. I don't care about American politics. You don't want to get into American politics? Yeah. I don't care for it, dude. I really don't. Don't give a doo-doo. It doesn't matter to me. Are you saying you're not brave enough for politics? Oh, no, I'm brave enough. I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. It's true. <laughs> I'm going to be the first to ask this one. Quarter 1 or Quarter 2, how about a video review of those games? I need to finish Quarter 2 first. So... <sighs> yeah. Um, Dizzy would not say if they would fire KK at a shareholders meeting. Shareholders want, want stability. If they lose money and the fans don't like the content, should be gone. George Lucas made Star Wars as modern day mythology, and that's what resonates with all of our different cultures. Kevin Feige ran the MCU with a plan. Any new on any news on Blu-ray releases of The Mandalorian? No, I haven't got any news on that. Facts on elegant weapons for more civilized age? Are you saying you're not? Star Wars is a kyber crystal under George Lucas. It was an absolute beautiful, powerful thing. But KK has bled the crystal deeply. We must all work to heal it. And it'll be pure. I hope they resurrect the Star Wars 1313 game as younger Boba Fett. Be sweet. What, you just play as Boba Fett, you mean? In regards to pressure comment, please let us know if you ever have dreams about Padme's childbirth. We're here. May the force be with you. Random question, if Mace was to come back, how would you want them to do it versus how you think they would do it? I can't tell you because that's how I wrote it in my fan film that will be made in the year 2052. Everyone here at Golden Guy Pictures loves you. Hey, I love you guys too. Uh, Kennedy needs to go after the mess that is the sequels in High Republic. It shows that wokeness has no place in Star Wars, resulting in terrible story and characters. Yeah, keep politics out, man. Seriously. Just tell it the way George did. The little guy fighting the big guy, and that's it. There you go. Thanks, David. Nice. Seems like the convo is taking a uh, a good turn. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I could. Well, uh, I think uh, this conversation, I was going to make this like a 10, 15 minute video, but as always, I love chilling with you guys and chatting. And I think this was a productive conversation. I feel like we all connected on different levels. I'm sorry if I missed some of your super chats. Oh, got one last one here. Wait, you got one here too? Thank you, Long Lad. Appreciate that.
Sorry to hear some fans are jumping ship, but there is always hope. Keep being awesome theory. I'm American and don't care for American politics. I still vote and everything, but it is a shit. Right. So let, so if I was American, I would vote. Um, I, I'd be, well, what is the thing? I'd register as independent. Yeah. That's where I would stand. Probably like that. I don't know the specifics of what that really means, but I just would be, I'm like, yeah, I'm not voting. So. Three, my dude, do me a solid and make a Luke lifting shirt. <laughs> sure. Sure thing. I'm worried about stuff. I'm actually making a new merch line. So it's going to be like this on, on, you know, nice quality stuff. But um, yeah, it's in the works. But a, a really, really crisp design. I was thinking about getting like an embroidery machine, maybe making those and like sending you guys individual stuff with um, n handwritten notes and all that, like a thank you and everything. A unique one with each order being different, but I don't know if I can do that during COVID. I don't know if they, I don't know. How does that work? Would people accept that? If you're a fan of something, you should always hold on to it as much as possible and continue to love these awesome characters and universes. Yeah, and I always do. You know, Star Wars 1 to 6 for me and Clone Wars will always hold a special place in my heart. And Rebels. I love your video theory with disappointed Gina and I'm conflicted about still supporting Lucasfilm even though I love Star Wars. Any advice? Yeah, so focus on the stuff that you enjoy. Um, like, look at me right now. I'm, I'm focusing on books from the 80s, you know, that, that are the literal transcripts from George Lucas's conversations with his team when he was making the original trilogy. And, and I'm learning so much more about Star Wars than I ever would by reading, you know, some of the books or stuff. I'm learning his creative process about everything. And I fundamentally care about just really the six movies. Um, my knowledge within those six movies is profound. My knowledge outside of those six movies I feel like wanes more and more as I uh, distance myself from them just because I don't have any interest. I could easily read books and memorize things, but what's the point in that? There's no creativity in that. You're just a, a memorizing drone. Like, well, I don't care. Uh, I like the creative side of everything. So I had no idea you're from Canada. You don't sound Canadian. Well, you know, uh, it's getting pretty icy out there, eh? so I might, uh, might take this, take this uh, call a little quick, and um, you know, take, take my, take my skates and go play some hockey a little bit. You know, that's uh, how we do it over here in Canada. Eh? Is that a little better for you? All right, I love you guys. I'll catch you later. I had a great talk, great chat with you, and uh, I'll see you on the gaming channel tonight, probably in a couple hours, and I'll have a review video for you tomorrow or. Um, Maybe a behind the scenes. Oh yeah, a behind the scenes video on actually George Lucas. Tomorrow's video is actually interesting. It's a George Lucas reveals. George Lucas explains why Obi Wan actually didn't train Leia, and what would have happened if he did. It's it's pretty sweet. It's a short, quick one, so I hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, last one from Brandon. Hey man, for a what if Wednesday, would it be possible to do what if Maul killed Caleb Doom? And took Ezra and Rebels. That'd be an interesting one. Sure, yeah. And I'm glad you guys are enjoying the podcast too on Spotify. So um, much love. I'm sorry if I missed anyone's soups. Hope you get some Dragon Ball fan fiction on your channel. Absolutely. Dragon Ball Theory. What do you think about the Snyder Cut leak? I don't know about it. I don't know about the leak. Just smoked a fat one. Nice, dude. Enjoy. <laughs> Go watch some of my other videos. I will see you guys later. Thanks for chilling with me. And uh, 